Hello, I'm shaking your hand as if you showed up at my door in my classroom. I will admit, I miss seeing your faces and hearing your voices and shaking your hand. But I'm glad that I still get to see you here. And that's why I keep having you do the Flipgrid videos or the video challenge I had you do this week. Part of it is so that I can see you and hear you. Right? And another part of it is actually when we can voice what we're learning, it actually helps us to retain it. I know most of you have already heard that Governor Greg Abbott has shuttered all schools throughout the end of the school year. And so I know most of you were concerned what's going to happen with graduation, right? I have a son who's a senior too, so it is a concern of mine as well. Uh, but with that said, I trust our superintendent. He's been really good at uh, trying to protect all of you and us. And I know he's going to work out uh, what's best in order so that you guys can still have some type of graduation celebration. As soon as I know, I promise you, I'll let you know through your mind, through Teams post, even through video, right? So just trust that we're going to work something out, I promise. With that said, this video is going to be about how to analyze a poem in six easy steps. I know many people struggle with understanding poetry. For me, it comes naturally. I even write it. But I want to try to make it as easy as possible and break it down into six steps for you. Um, our agenda today is uh, we will learn how to analyze a poem in six easy steps. You'll take notes over those six easy steps. So what I want you to do is you will pause the video after each slide to take notes over the slide and take a picture of my notes, your notes, and upload them in the assignments tab that says plus add work and then upload from this device. So step one, read the poem. I know that seems like a duh, but you don't just read it once. You want to get at least three reads of it to really help get beyond the surface level, okay? Uh, so read the poem once to yourself quietly to internalize it, right? To feel it, right? And then read it again, but this time aloud, all the way through at least twice, right? Feel free to play a recording of the poem or watching a video of someone reading the poem too. And I promise you, with almost every single poem I'm going to assign, I will either provide the poet reading it or someone else reading it or a video of someone reading it, all right? Then ask yourself, what was your first impression and immediate response, both positive and negative, to the poem? Also, take note of the poem's structure and its rhythm, right? For example, are the lines short and meant to be read slow? Or does the poem move fast? And if so, why is it moving fast? Step two, consider the title. I know a lot of times people skip over the title, but the title's actually important. So look at it, right? Think about the title and how it relates to the poem itself. Titles often provide important clues about what is at the heart of a piece, Likewise, a title may work ironically or in opposition to the poem. Questions to talk about or to consider are as follows. Does the poem even have a title? If not, why do you think the poet would leave a poem without one? Some of Shakespearean sonnets, most of them just say sonnet number one, sonnet number 36. Emily Dickinson her poems don't have titles. We have subscribed the first line of all her poems as a title. So keep that in mind, all right? Does the title, though, if it does have one, immediately change how you think or perceive the poem itself, especially after you've read it within its context, all right? Does the poem's title paint a picture for you that gives a specific time frame, a setting, or an action? 
And does the title imply multiple possibilities? Step three, understanding the speaker. Understanding the speaker is at the center of a poem may help the piece appear more tangible, like you can feel it, you can touch it, you can grasp it, because we're able to imagine a person behind the language, behind the words on the page, right? Questions to consider are the following. Who tells the poem? Who does the poem give, or does the poem give any clues about the speaker's personality, their point of view, their age, or their gender? Age matters. If it's a six-year-old speaker, is would that be different language or come across differently than a 51-year-old speaker, right? Uh, then that's when we get, is this a reliable speaker or an unreliable speaker, all right? Who is the speaker addressing? Dressing? Who is the intended audience, all right? Uh, and does the speaker seem attached or detached from what is being said? Step four, consider the mood and the tone. If you look at the picture on the right, uh, it's a man. Tone comes from the head, right? It is the author's word choice that shows the author's attitude toward their subject. Is there a neutral, negative, or positive connotation? Mood comes from the heart, kind of, right? It's the emotional feelings that the writing makes the reader or the audience feel. It's the atmosphere. Let's move back to the left, okay? After talking about or considering the speaker, it's important to address the attitude or the mood the poem is attempting to convey. Some can be brooding and grieving. Others may have a song-like cadence or a rhyme. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Get the idea? Right? Questions to consider. What is the attitude each speaker or characters give off, right? Are there places where the poem's tone may switch or shift, and why? Like, does the speaker go from happy to angry, right? Um, syntax. Syntax is how the words and phrases are arranged in the poem. What type of syntax is used in the poem and what effect do these certain words have on us? Do they have long sentences, short sentences, fragments? Do they use formal words or informal words? Do they use phrases, everyday phrases? So it's important to consider the syntax that's being used in the poem. Step five. Paraphrase the poem. Now, this may seem a little redundant, but it's actually pretty helpful. Since you've already discussed or considered figurative language, mood, setting, and speaker, there's no better time than to apply what you've learned line by line. Paraphrasing may seem pretty self-explanatory. However, keep in mind, this is not about skipping lines or condensing. Instead, you should translate line by line figurative language or unclear phrases into simpler, more literal terms that will not get in the way of analyzing the poem later on. On the right side of the screen in the green box, there's a poem on the left in white and then the paraphrase in yellow on the right side. So let's go ahead and look at the poem. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf. So Eden sank to grief. So dawn goes down to day. Nothing good can stay. So let's look at the paraphrase of that on the right. Nature's first green is gold. Her heart is you to hope. That means nature's first color, hmm, beginning, beginninger, is gold. Gold is considered precious, rare, valuable, like 24 karat gold, right? 
It is her most difficult time to slow down, hold on to, or remember. Right? The next two. Her earliest leaves a flower, but only so an hour. Nature's first appearance is not like a leaf, the same as others. Boring, but like a flower. Beautiful, distinct, and complex. However, this rare beauty only last a short while than the last lines. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down today, nothing good can stay. That means in the paraphrase, the flower can no longer hold its beauty and it becomes lesser, lesser by turning into a leaf. Step six, step six, sorry. <laughs> It's theme. First, let's look at what theme is. The theme of the poem on the right is the central idea or the main idea. To identify a poem's theme, ask yourself what ideas or insights about life or human nature you have found in whatever poem you're reading. All right, now theme is last but not least. It's time to get to the core of what the poem is about by identifying its theme. Remember, the theme of the poem relates to a universal truth, a universal issue, or a universal conflict. To determine the theme, look over all of your analysis that we've done in the first five steps, right? And connect the dots. Remember, who, what is the subject? What is the poem about? What's the topic? Who is the speaker? This is important. What situation is the speaker in? And how do they feel about their subject or the topic? And what is the mood? How does it make you, the reader, feel? The big six analysis in discussing poetry graphic organizer is what we will be using in class, right, to ask questions about the poems we've read at least twice until we arrive at a comfortable understanding of the poems, right? And you look, it has the title what words, ideas appear in other places in the poem? Is it repeated somewhere else? Is it a line in the poem? What does it highlight? The speaker. What is the speaker like? What does he, she, love, hate, fear, etc.? What is the speaker's attitude toward the subject? Theme. What are the big universal ideas addressed in the poem? And how are they presented? Think tone and imagery. Paraphrase, line by line or stanza by stanza, put the poem in your own words. What big ideas, images stand out to you? And what is the story of the poem? What is happening? The turns, the shifts, right? Where are the spots that the poem turns or shifts, all right? What is the tone at the beginning of the poem? at the end of the poem, where does it actually shift? All right, tools, down at the bottom. What poetic devices are being used most frequently? Figured language, imagery, similes, metaphors, personification, hyperbole, think about those, all right? Even onomatopoeia, all right? Um, what tools repeat or create a consistent image throughout the entire poem? All right, and what are the most powerful metaphors being used in the poem? All right, now it's your turn. Make sure you take a picture of your notes and upload them into the assignments tab that says plus add word and then upload from your device. All right, ciao. I hope you have a good week. Looking forward to probably gonna assign some of video assignments this week. So keep that in mind. Miss you guys.